My name is Daniel DiMartino, and I am a research associate at the Institute for the Study of Free Enterprise here at the University of Kentucky. And today I'm going to be discussing something that is not being discussed a lot about the coronavirus pandemic, and that is how the current recession is going to negatively affect the solvency of the Social Security and the Medicare program and what the government can do to fix it. The first things to know about Social Security and Medicare and how and to understand how the coronavirus pandemic will affect them is that these are not savings programs set up by the government for you. These are pay-as-you-go social uh, programs, as they are called. And this means that they take taxes from current workers and they give away benefit to current retirees. That means that if there are more workers today, uh, you know, they can pay benefits, but if nobody pays taxes in the future, then those future workers that pay taxes today are not going to receive any benefits. Everyone who works in the United States and uh, is a, a resident pays a 15.3% total payroll tax rate. That is between you and your employer uh, that pays on your behalf as well. And that, those funds go to three specific trust funds that the government owns. These are the Social Security Trust Fund, the Disability Trust Fund, and the Hospital Insurance Trust Fund. Now, these trust funds are going to run out because spending on Social Security benefits is higher than the income these trust funds are receiving. The same for hospital insurance for uh, the, the Medicare Trust Fund. And this means that even according to pre-coronavirus projections before this economic recession, the Medicare trust fund, the hospital insurance one, was scheduled to run out of benefits in 2026, while Social Security in 2034. Disability insurance is in a better place at 2065. Now the coronavirus pandemic is going to fast forward these dates closer to the present. Why? Unemployment is surging to Great Depression levels. And this means that a lot of people are not going to be paying payroll taxes for the Social Security and the Medicare trust funds, which means that these funds are going to run out faster than the government expected earlier in March. And when this happens, probably Medicare won't run out in 2026, but in 2024. Well, Social Security might not run out in 2034, but in 2032. This means that those years, these programs are not going to be able to pay the full benefits. What would that look like? If the Social Security Trust Fund is depleted, then Social Security benefits would be cut by about 25% in the long term. So for an average retiree that receives $1,500 in Social Security benefits today, that person would start receiving instead $1,125, so a nearly $400 per month cut. The fund would still be able to pay about 90% of the, of the promised expenses, but this is a hospital insurance fund, which is the fund that Medicare uses to pay for the healthcare seniors receiving hospitals. If the trust fund is not able to fund all the, all the reimbursements for hospitals, hospitals might start denying care for seniors in, across the United States. And that could be life-threatening for many people. The main long-term trends that have resulted in this increasing deficit in both Social Security and Medicare are an aging population and also an increase in healthcare costs. The proportion of Americans 65 years old and older has increased steadily since 1960 and is projected to continue increasing. While in 1960, less than one in 10 Americans were uh, older than, than 65, in 2020, that proportion is over 15%. In 2060, it will be nearly one quarter of the population, one in every four Americans that will be 65 years old or more. This means that there are gonna be less workers paying taxes and more seniors receiving benefits. And that's not going to be financially sustainable. And that's why the program is scheduled to run out. As for Medicare, the program is not only threatened by an increased population that's eligible for the program of seniors, but it's also threatened by increasing healthcare costs. The cost of medical care has risen much faster than inflation, at least since 1980. And that means that 
not only is Medicare paying for more people and receiving less revenue from less workers, but it is also paying benefits that are more expensive over time. In fact, so that you can visualize how big the deficit is over the lifetime. An average worker who turned 65 years old in 2020, this year, would have paid adjusted for inflation, present value in, in 2018 US dollars, would have paid nearly $300,000 in taxes to the Social Security Trust Fund over his or her lifetime. But that person would have received as a retiree or will receive about $320,000 in benefits. That is a huge gap. And that gap is only projected to grow by 2050. That means that the government is, is collecting less taxes than it's giving away to you. For Medicare, it's even more stark. It is an about $80,000 paid in lifetime taxes for nearly $230,000 in, in, in benefits. In 2050, it will be over $300,000 deficit uh, for the program per person. Uh, we could increase taxes and lift the, the taxable cap for both programs. This is the cap that um, over which payroll taxes are not assessed, but also benefits are not calculated. The problem with these two solutions, increasing tax rates and uh, lifting the, in, the payroll tax cap, is that they would decrease economic growth drastically, especially at a time that we're coming out of a recession and we need more growth and people to start working. So you wonder, what are the solutions to this? The program was already scheduled to run out before coronavirus. Coronavirus is just gonna decrease even more tax revenue, uh, perhaps even increase spending because of the, of the pandemic that Medicare is on med, uh, and the government is paying for uh, in, in large part. What can we do so that seniors don't receive a social security cut in their benefits and they can continue accessing hospitals through the Medicare program? We could increase the eligibility age for both programs, broaden the tax base. So instead of just taxing wages, uh, they, the programs could also tax, payroll taxes could also be assessed on healthcare benefits and other benefits that employers give their employees and therefore are part of their pay. Another solution for both is just to increase economic growth and diversify the trust fund. Increasing economic growth could be done through deregulation and through lifting any type of barrier to entrepreneurship that would create more jobs and increase wages. And uh, diversifying the trust fund means that part of the trust fund could be invested in the stock market. That would be vo volatile for the trust fund, but if it's not a large part, it could also, uh, I mean, would very likely tend to increase the trust fund because the stock market grows faster than, than inflation and than government bonds. As for the social security program alone, the program could uh, be made much more solvent if benefits were not calculated based on average private sector wages. They should grow with uh, inflation rather than with wages because inflation grows slower than wages and because it would still allow the program to pay the same uh, amount adjusted for purchasing power and for inflation to every beneficiary. And then we could also just cap benefits and uh, slow or slow benefit growth for just higher income beneficiaries so that the poor are not affected, but the program is also made more solvent for everyone. As for Medicare, it could be turned into what is called a premium support system. So instead of Medicare just working as a big government insurance company for retirees, it could work as a program that instead of charging premiums for, for people and then paying from taxes from the trust fund to hospitals for, for the care seniors receive, it could give a voucher every month to seniors that seniors could then use to pay for their own insurance, health insurance, just like they currently do with Medicare Advantage. And that's a program that is very popular, that has been proven to cut costs because there is competition between insurance companies. And that allows them to compete with premiums, compete with deductibles, and uh, hospitals would also be reimbursed higher rates, so they would tend to accept more Medicare beneficiaries, 
and everybody would have more choice for the program for the for the plan they want and congress would be allowed to cap the growth of the, of these vouchers so that also the the program is made more solvent over time The coronavirus pandemic should be a wake-up call to Congress that we cannot wait to act until last minute to fix the underlying problems of pay-as-you-go programs such as uh, Social Security and Medicare. And that to protect current retirees, we need to implement market-based reforms such as making Medicare into a premium support program and increasing the eligibility age of both programs uh, and slowing benefit growth at least for higher income beneficiaries, rather than increasing taxes that are just gonna slow down the recovery from the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression.